Hello everyone, in this lecture we are going to talk about Euler paths and Euler circuits and after we get to know these concepts we are going to explore the seven bridges of Kongsberg and why there are not any solutions to that particular problem. So let's start with Euler paths. What's an Euler path? Well basically it's a path which visits every edge exactly once. So let's say we have a graph like this. If we can construct a path that visits all the edges of the graph exactly once then that particular path is an Euler path. So we can have a path that goes from C to B to A to D so we start from here, we go to B, we go to A, and we go to D. In this particular path, we are hitting this edge, this edge, and this edge exactly once. Therefore, C, B, A, D is an Eulerian path for this particular graph. If we have a graph like this, an Eulerian path would be a path that goes from D, A, C, B, B, A. Even though we have a loop, however, still we can create an Eulerian path. So we can start from D, we can go to A, we can go to C, go to B, come back to B again because it's a loop, and then go to A, end at A. So as you can see it in this particular path, we have gone through all the edges of the graph and we have gone through them exactly once, therefore this particular path is an Eulerian path. So an Euler path is a path that visits every edge in the graph exactly once. Also, just so you know, a graph that has Eulerian path is called a traversable or semi-Eulerian. So since this particular graph has an Euler path, therefore it's called a traversable or semi-Eulerian. Okay, so now we know what's an Euler path, but is there a way we can tell whether a graph has an Euler path or not? Well, yes there is, and let me explain it to you. If you observe this particular graph, or if you look at the degrees of this particular graph, this vertex has degree 1, this vertex has degree 3, this one has degree 4, and this one has degree 2. So we have two odd degrees and two even degrees. If you look at this particular example, our first example, this vertex has degree 1, this one has degree 2, this one has degree 2, and this one has degree 1. So again, we have two odd degrees and two even degrees. And that is the particular condition for having an Euler path. A graph will have an Euler path if all the vertices have even degrees except two having odds. So as we looked at these examples, we can see that all the vertices in these examples have even degrees except two. In this example, this one and this one have odd degrees. In this particular example, this one and this one have odd degrees. So for a graph to have an Euler path, all the vertices have to have even degrees except two. When this condition exists in a particular graph, then that particular graph will have an Euler path, as we can see it in these examples. Also, once we have a graph that has a necessary condition of having an Eulerian path, meaning it has two vertices having odd degrees and the rest of them having even degrees, when we want to construct the Eulerian path of that particular graph, we have to start from one vertex having an odd degree and then end the path at the other vertex that has odd degrees. So for this particular example, the Eulerian path in this graph has to start either from this vertex or this vertex and it has to end from this vertex or on this vertex. We cannot have an Eulerian path in a graph that starts on an even vertex, and you can try it. So let's say we will start from here, go here, loop back in, go to 3. Either we have to go here, if we come to this vertex, we did not visit this edge, or if we come here, we did not visit this edge. So in an Eulerian path, we have to start on an odd vertex and then end it on an odd vertex. So this is it about Euler paths. Then we come to Euler circuits. An Euler circuit is a path which visits every edge exactly once and starts and ends at the same vertex. In other words, an Euler circuit is an Euler path, however, we start and end at the same vertex. That is called an Euler circuit. So to give you an example, let's say we have a graph like this. An Euler circuit will be something like this. A path that goes from C to B to A to D to C. As you can see it, we started at C and we ended it at C and we are visiting every edge. Therefore, this is an Euler circuit. So we start at C, we go to B, we go to A, we go to D and then we come back to C. Therefore, this is an Euler circuit. Let's say we have a graph like this. This is another example. Let's say we will have a path like this that goes from E to D to A to B. It comes back to B. It goes to C and then it ends at E. As you can see it, we started at E and then we ended it at E and we are visiting every edge. Therefore, this is an Euler circuit. So an Euler circuit is an Euler path that starts and ends at the same vertex. When a graph has an Euler circuit, it is called an Eulerian or unicursal, just so you know. As we saw it for an Euler path, there's a condition for a graph having an Euler path, and that was if all the vertices have even degrees except two of them having odd degrees. Is there a condition like that for an Eulerian circuit? 
Well, actually there is. So if you observe right here, we have an Euler circuit in this graph, and as you can see it, all the vertices have even degrees. And that is basically the condition. So a graph will have an Euler circuit if the degrees of all its vertices are even. So if we have a graph like this, these were our two examples. As you can see it, all the vertices in the graph have even degrees. Therefore, this graph will have an Euler circuit. However, if we have one vertex or two vertex or three vertex having odd degrees in the graph, then that particular graph will not have an Euler circuit. So for a graph to have an Euler circuit, all the vertices in the graph has to have even degrees. So an Euler path is a path which visits every edge exactly once. An Euler circuit is a path which visits every edge exactly once and it starts and ends at the same vertex. For a graph to have an Euler path, all the vertices in the graph has to have even degrees except two of them having odds. For a graph to have an Euler circuit, all the vertices in the graph has to have even degrees. So now since we know about Euler paths and Euler circuits, let's check out why the problem of the seven bridges of Kongsberg has no solution. Just to remind you, the problem says, can we walk through the city that would cross each bridge once and only once, meaning can we go from this side to this side to this side to this side, and we go through all the bridges exactly once. As we saw it in the previous lecture, there isn't a particular solution for this problem. So if we turn this particular map into graph, we'll put a vertex on each piece of land. So we have four pieces of land with this one, this one, this one, and this one. We'll put a vertex on each piece of land and based on how many bridges are between each land, we will put edges. So here we have two bridges between this piece of land and this piece of land. Therefore, we'll put two edges. Between this piece of land and this piece of land, there are two bridges, which is this one and this one. Therefore, between this vertex and this vertex, we'll put two edges. And we will do the same for all the other bridges. Therefore, this will be the graph that represents this particular map. So if we take this graph and we modify it a little bit, it will become something like that. This is the same graph, however, we just straighten out the edges. And the problem asks us to devise a path that will visit each edge exactly once. Meaning, is there an Euler path in this particular graph? And we know that the condition for having an Euler path is all the vertices have to have even degrees except two of them having odd degrees. So let's check it out. Well, this vertex has degree 3, this vertex has degree 5, this one has degree 3, and this one has degree 3. Since in this particular graph that represents this map, not all our vertices have even degrees except two of them having odds. Therefore, there isn't an Eulerian path in this map. And that is the whole idea. So the problem of the seven bridges of Kongsberg does not have a solution because when we turn our map into a graph, we see that we cannot construct an Eulerian path since not all our vertices have even degrees except two of them having odds. However, we can have a solution if we add an edge to the graph. So let's say we'll add an edge between this vertex and this vertex, meaning we'll add an edge between this piece of land and this piece of land. So let's say we'll have an edge like this. As you can see it, all the vertices in the graph have even degrees except two of them having odds. This one and this one have even degrees. This one and this one have odd degrees. If we have a graph like this or if the bridges of Kongsberg became eight, then we would have a solution or we would have an Eulerian path that goes through the city and walks through all the bridges exactly once. And this was it about the seven bridges of Kongsberg, Euler paths and Euler circuits. And with this, we come to the end of this lecture.